What is going on, y'all? It is the Caveman back at it again with another video. Yesterday, it was cold. I attended the game, and not that I wasn't prepared for it, but I often forget how quickly Buffalo can turn you into a walking ice cube. But anyway, before we talk about yesterday's game, you guys know the drill around here. I just gotta find it first. Mott's applesauce, if you're ever hungry, thirsty, whatever it might be. Mott's applesauce will satisfy whatever satisfy you need to satisfy the K-Man guarantee. I promise it will never fail ya. Let's talk about the game, folks. Our beloved Buffalo Bills at home take down the Carolina Panthers in a very expected yet humongous victory. 31-14, to the Buffalo Bills did their duties, and they really did not struggle to do so whatsoever. Although, I gotta be honest, I really don't have much to say about this game. I have a couple thoughts that I'm gonna keep short and sweet, but otherwise, I have some other stuff I wanna talk about. But regarding this game specifically, there just isn't much on my mind. First, I'll say that this was an interesting matchup. I mean, the Carolina Panthers were kicker. List. Zane Gonzalez was unavailable for whatever reason. I'm not exactly sure why, but they did not go for any extra points. They went for every uh, fourth down. Um, they went for two-point conversions. They were not able to do anything kicker-related. I don't know why the punter couldn't at least attempt to do it, but, you know, that's what the Panthers were struggling with. And the Buffalo Bills, on the other hand, were struggling with the fact that they had an offensive line put together by paper clips, scotch tape, and band-aid. But despite that fact, Devin Singletary had one of his best showings on the ground as he rushed 22 times for 86 yards and a touchdown. It would have been the first time we had an 100-yard rusher since 2019 when Devin Singletary did it in his rookie season. So it was good to see him have such a nice day. Although Devin Singletary only averaged 3.9 yards per carry, the story of his season up to this point has been not having much room to run through, not having a hole to hit. It's not been easy as a running back for anybody in our backfield, especially Devin Singletary, but he's made the most of it. The fact that he was able to average nearly 4 yards per carry behind that offensive line it's pretty impressive in itself. And of course, I want to acknowledge the great day that Gabe Davis had. Five receptions, 85 yards, two touchdowns. Um, I would call it a breakout game, but I feel like he's had multiple breakout games in the past. I feel like I've been saying this before. Hopefully this time around, Gabe Davis will continue to get a lot of playing time so he has the opportunity to produce because I think at this point, it's very clear that he's earned it. And the defense also did their duties in this Week 15 matchup. Understandably, they played against a pretty pathetic Cam Newton-led offense, but they've been going through a rough pass throughout the last couple weeks so this was a good game to get the confidence back up for sure there is one more thing i want to say about this game specifically we handled it business per usual against a team that we were much better than much more talented than and that's great but I think it's a little deeper than that. And let me explain. Based on how the season has gone, not only for the Buffalo Bills, but for every other team in the NFL, I think the probability of this game going south was a lot higher than everybody wants to realize, especially considering the fact that we handled the game the way you'd like to expect us to. Our offensive line has won and lost us games this season. And it has been a very large determining factor for our offense and a big reason why we've been held back. Considering the fact that we entered this game with a unit that is weaker than what we usually roll out, that is relatively concerning and just acknowledging how well we game planned, how well we executed, how well we play called in a game where we had this major obstacle at hand. I think that deserves a ton of credit to Brian Dable, Josh Allen, and all the playmakers, skill positions, the coaching staff. I, you know, this was a massive roadblock and it could have gone south, but we handled it extremely, extremely well. So hats off to the Bills offense this week. But yeah, as far as that game goes, that's about all I got. But I have one thing I want to say regarding the bigger picture of the season and why Bills fans really should be looking forward to what we have in the next couple of weeks. I think it's safe to say that we've learned that anything is possible in the year 2021. Like sure, we lost to the Jacksonville. Jaguars and only one of two wins by Urban Meyer. Sure, the Indianapolis Colts blew us out. Sure, that Mac Jones only threw three passes and beat us. But, but, we have to take a look around because we're not the only ones experiencing all these hiccups. How about the Bucks losing to the Saints twice in which they faced two backup quarterbacks in both of these matchups and he got shot out the second time and this just happened last night. How about the Lions completely decimating the Arizona Cardinals? It didn't even come down to the last play like it did with the Vikings. The Lions just swept the floor with the Cardinals. Do I need to go on? I mean, Taylor Huntley nearly beat Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers on a two-point conversion that was just inches away from being completed. I mean, anything could happen. 
this year, right? So as Buffalo Bills fans, it might have seemed low at different points of season, but it's not like we're the only team experiencing this. The year is far from over, and I think people like myself have fallen victim to overreaction after some given games this season. Although I am not in any way, shape, or form taking back what I said because we have true issues with this roster, I just am taking a different perspective with the whole thing and taking a step back and evaluating not only how the Bills season has gone, but comparing it to how other team seasons have gone as well. We started this season off as not only AFC favorites, but Super Bowl favorites. We were on a roll. We were tearing teams to shreds. And then we suddenly started to lose a few games here and there. And then not only did we drop from Super Bowl favorites, we dropped from AFC top seed favorites. We dropped from winning the AFC East. We have taken a tremendous downswing. And although we started feeling like we were on top of the world, we were on top of the world. And now we've sunk it down to being a bubble playoff team. We still write our own destiny. And we are lucky to say that. The Indianapolis Colts beat the New England Patriots and they did what we needed them to do. The dominoes have fallen in our favor. And the fact that we control our own destiny is really Really all we can ask for at the end of the day. So we need to go into New England, beat the absolute shit out of the Patriots so we can reclaim the AFC East title and show the world that we are not frauds, that we are still one of the best teams in the NFL. We take this game home. If we take it, we are going to get hot going into the last stretch of the season. And it doesn't matter. It does not matter how you start. It's about how you finish. If we make it in and we hit our peak during the playoffs, you never know. You never know what could happen, especially in the year 2021. The possibilities are endless. And as long as Josh Allen is our quarterback, I think it's safe to say anything is possible. And although the biggest goal of winning a Super Bowl seems extremely unlikely this season, I'm not ruling anything out yet because this year specifically has just been way too wacky. If we hit our peak, if we get hot at the right time with Josh Allen at quarterback, you better look out. So yeah, that's my mini rant. I think a lot of people, including myself, have fallen victim to overreaction. But if you just take a slightly different perspective at looking at the season, we are not the only team that have experienced all sorts of hiccups this year. We are far from the only team, in fact. So with that being said, I'm not ruling out any result for the season. I'm just going to watch and wait to see what happens. But if you have any thoughts, please leave them down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, as always, please like, subscribe, do all the fun stuff. If you want to hit the bell to be notified when I upload, I'd appreciate that. You want to go over to Twitter, follow me over there. I'd appreciate that as well. I also have a TikTok that you might want to go follow down in the description as well. And I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.